Hello, welcome to Wellness by Degrees. Today we're going to be doing a class for people with Parkinson's. So for this class, you're going to need a couple of weights, one or two pounds, a blanket, and a block if you have one. If not, it's okay, we can modify. Uh, just know that the exercise will be more beneficial with those things. So the point of this class today is to help to maintain and increase mobility and flexibility and to prevent falls. Let's get started. So to start out, we're going to move into a tall mountain pose. First, look forward at your feet. Make sure that the toes are pointing forward. The feet are four to six inches apart. The ankles are stacked below the knees. And then we'll move up, making sure that our hips are straight underneath our shoulders. We might roll the shoulders back, sit up nice and tall, lengthen through your spine, let the crown of the head come up towards the ceiling, and begin to breathe slowly in and out through the nose. We're going to start the class out with a warm-up, then we'll move into weights. And then we'll do some standing exercises to help with balance. As you breathe, start to draw the, belt, the breath deeper into the belly. And try to release all the breath out through the nose. If you want, you can close your eyes as you breathe. And then we'll begin to connect breath to movement, starting to warm up the joints, warm up the muscles, and get some movement into the body. We'll bring the head over to the right side. Take three deep breaths into this area. And then there's the option to bring your hand up, resting it gently on the head, and tuck the chin down. Even if you don't bring the hand up, try to tuck the chin in and down towards the shoulder. And continue to breathe. Now, if you have the hand up, release it. Lift the chin and come back to center, moving to the other side. Bring the chin over, take three deep breaths here. We're still working on keeping a tall posture, as tall as you can. Lifting through the spine, trying to stretch it out. Then option to tuck the chin down. You might bring your left hand up to rest gently on the head if you want. You don't have to. And continue to breathe. If the hand is up, release it. Let the head lift and come back to center. Now we're going to move slowly through some circles. If you want, you can bring the hands up to the neck to help support it. As you go back, just be careful to make sure that you're not dropping the head back, as that could create some injuries. Roll slowly, front side, slightly back, and to the other side. You don't have to use your hands if you don't want to. Just allow the movement in the neck to be very gentle. And go the other way. Bringing the head back to center, we'll move into the shoulders now. So you're welcome to drop the hands down by the sides. We'll just start by lifting up the shoulders 
and bringing them down. Lift as high as they'll go and back down. Lift and drop. And now we're going to start to roll the shoulders forward. So rolling forward, trying to hit every point. So that would be up, forward, down, back. So be aware of that. It's OK if both sides are different. It's OK if your range of motion isn't as big as you'd like it to be. Just the motion itself is going to help you gain more flexibility and mobility in those areas. Now, if you want, you can bring long, wide arms into it, making big circles forward with the arms. It's OK if the arms don't go above the shoulders. Just do the circles that work for you. And now, just with the shoulders, we're going backwards. So trying to hit all four points forward, up, back, and down. Go at your own pace but try to keep continual movement in the body. And now add the arm circles in, so as big as you can, big full arm circles. Good job. This is really helping out those shoulder joints and the muscles that support the shoulders. Okay, let the arms drop down, shake it out a little bit. Let the shoulders relax. If you want, you're welcome to reach over and massage the shoulder for a minute. And place the hands back down on the legs. Take a deep inhale and exhale through the mouth. One more time, deep inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Great job. We're going to move into the wrists, so just starting to roll the wrists in one direction. Try to make sure that they're going in the same direction. This is helping to activate our brain. Sometimes we notice they just start doing their own thing. Now go in the opposite, trying to keep both hands moving towards the same direction at the same time. Great job. We're going to stretch the arms forward and push the palms out as if we're saying no. And then we're going to fold the palms down towards the body, trying to do this with straight arms if you can, or as straight as they'll go. Bringing the hands up and back down. This should give you a good stretch through the arms and the wrists. Up and down. One more time. Up and down. Great. Let the arms come down and rest. We'll start to move into the torso. So for this, you might move forward on your chair if it's comfortable. If not, you can stay where you're at. OK, from here, we'll move into a twist. So we're going to bring the right hand back on the leg. We're going to bring the left hand forward. And we're going to turn the shoulders slightly to the right. This might be your twist. This is level one. Level two, you'll bring both hands to the side of the right leg. You'll turn the shoulders a little bit further and look to the wall. Level three, you might take that right hand and put it over the back of the chair, and you might look back. That's the deepest level of the stretch and the twist. Whatever level you're in, breathe. And then release, come back to center, and we'll move to the other side. So sliding the left hand back, putting the right hand in front of the left hand. You might bring both hands to the side and turn further for a deeper stretch. Looking to the wall, you might go deeper still and bring that left hand up and back behind the chair. You might look back behind you. Wherever you are, breathe deeply, holding the twist. And then slowly unwind, coming back to center. Great job. From here, we're going to do a side bend. 
So we're just going to drop the right hand down. The left hand is going to stay here for right now. I want you to pretend that your body is in between two pieces of glass. So we're trying not to move forward or backwards. We're just trying to move straight over to the side. So we're going to start to tilt over to the side. Right hand drops down. Left hand can stay on your hip. Or if you want, you can flip the palm up and start to lift it up as high as it goes, maybe coming over the head. You can bring the gaze down towards the right hand. Breathe. Or you might look up if it's comfortable for your neck, towards the left hand. Breathe wherever you are. You're always welcome to change the hands or come up if you don't feel like you're balanced. And everybody come up. Dropping the left hand down now. Right hand will come to the hip at first. We'll start to lean over to that left side. If you want, you're welcome to turn your right palm up. Start to lift it up. It can come here. It can come here. It can come all the way over the head. You might look down towards your left hand. Or if it's comfortable and OK for your neck and balance, you can look up towards your right hand. Wherever you are, breathe. We'll only be here a little bit longer. And bring that hand up. Bring both hands back to the legs. Take a deep inhale to reset. And a full exhale through the mouth. One more. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Great job. OK, moving on. We're going to come down to the hips. And I want you to pay attention to where you're folding. So bring both hands to the waist. We're going to grab the hip bones, if we can feel them, and start to hinge forward. We don't want to fold where our stomach and our rib cage are. We want to keep that as tall as possible. We want to just hinge from the hip bones themselves. So we're leaning forward. We're going to lean over to the right. We're going to lean back. This is going to help build the strength of your abs over to the other side. And also, this is going to bring some more movement and motion into the hips. So go in a circle, but we're still trying to hit those four points. Remember, it doesn't matter how deep you can go. What matters is that you're pushing yourself and that you can feel a stretch and a difference in your own body. Whatever exercise you're doing is going to be getting you a little bit further than you were yesterday. Just be mindful of your body. Listen to what it's telling you. If something is feeling good or feeling like it's helping you, keep doing it. If it's not feeling good, then just skip that part. OK, great job. I mean, everything's going to be a challenge. Go in the opposite direction. But you're hoping that it's a challenge that helps you overall and feels good, not a challenge that's going to cause you more hurt and pain in the long run. Remember to keep the chest up as you go forward, trying to keep the breath connected to the movement. OK, come back up to center. Let the hands come down. We're going to move into some of our warrior poses. So I'm just going to slide. I promise we'll use these props later. We're just going to slide them out of the way a little bit. And we're going to walk our feet all the way over to the right side of our chair so that we're sitting with our knees facing our wall. We might grab onto the chair with one of our hands for stability. And we're going to slide our left hip slightly off the chair so that we can move into an adaptation of warrior one. So there's three, op er, three options in this pose. Option one, you just slide the foot slightly back. You can keep your hands down. Option two, you slide the foot back further so that the toes are pressing into the ground and the knee comes straight down. You might bring your hands to heart center. This is option two. Option three, you can bring the hands down as you move into it. This is the deepest version, is stretching the leg out behind you. The knee doesn't have to be all the way straight, or it can straighten out completely. 
Option three for the hands are to come up above the head. You can keep the arms bent or you can lift the arms so that they straighten. This is the deepest version of the pose. So I'm going to let you get into the version that feels most comfortable for you today. Make sure wherever you're at, you feel strong and supported. You feel that you're grounding down and that you're not going to fall, but that you're strengthening your legs. Okay, and you can mix and match the arms as well if you'd like. Whatever pose you're in, breathe. You're welcome to change positions at any time if you need to. We'll be here for two more deep breaths. Okay, let the hands come down, let that leg come in, take a deep breath through the nose and out the mouth to reset, inhale, and exhale, great job. Now start to walk the foot out, we're moving into warrior two. So this is level one of warrior two, hands stay down, foot steps out slightly, level two of warrior two. One leg comes straight out in one direction, one straight out the other direction. You might bring the arms up with the elbows bent. You might turn this shoulder out slightly further. Level three, the deepest level, we walk that foot all the way back. The foot's still flat on the floor. The leg straightens out. You might open the arms all the way and look over the right fingertips. Find the version that feels good for your body for you and breathe. You're welcome to switch the position at any time if it's not working for you. You can mix and match the arms and the legs. Now we have an option before we end to drop the left arm back and put it on the waist and to lift the palm so it faces the ceiling and maybe bring it up and put a slight arch in the back. So this is going to be a reverse warrior if you want to try it out from warrior two. Bring that arm back down if you tried out reverse warrior. We'll step the feet back over to the right side. Great job. Now walk all the way around to the left side. It's okay if it takes a minute to get there. Find your mountain pose on the left side, then start to Bring your right hip slightly off the chair. You can hold the back of the chair for support and start to bring that foot back. So warrior one, level one, warrior one, level two, and warrior one, level three. Okay, pick your level, figure out what feels best, and breathe. You should feel like your right leg is working. It's supporting your body. The muscle is growing. It's becoming stronger. It's going to feel a little uncomfortable. If you're feeling pinching or sharp pain at all, then that's not normal. <laughs> so move into a different version of the pose. Okay, bring that leg back in. Drop the arms wherever they were and we'll move to warrior two. So warrior two, level one, warrior two, level two, and warrior two, level three. You can mix and match the arms. Find the level that feels good to you. I'm gonna move into level two. Okay, breathe here. And then option if you want, you can bring the right hand down, you can bring the left palm so that it faces up, and you can move into a reversed warrior. It's okay if the arm doesn't come all the way above the head. If 
you're in reverse warrior, come back down. Walk the feet back in. Take a deep inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. One more time, inhale and exhale. And walk yourself back to center. Find your mountain pose. Sit up nice and tall. And moving down the body, down the legs. We're going to start to work on the feet, the calves, and the lower leg. So step the feet slightly in. We're going to start to press into the ball of the foot and lift the heel up. As high as it'll go, and then slowly connecting breath to movement, lower the heel down. Lift the toes up and lower the toes back down. Alternating between toes and heels, we'll be here for a little bit. Connect your breath to your movement. You don't have to go at the same speed that I go. Just make sure that you have continuous motion. You can do this with shoes on. It might be easier to do it without shoes. So if you need to, you can pause the video and remove your shoes. My shoes are pretty flexible, so it works well with the shoes I'm currently wearing. Okay. Now we're going to slide the right foot back and press hard down into the earth with the toes and the ball of the foot. Hold it there for a moment and breathe. And release. We're going to do that one more time on that side. We're going to bring that foot in, press down. Option, if you want a deeper stretch to flip the toenails underneath, this will definitely work better without shoes on. So if you plan to do this, please remove your shoes. Or you can keep pressing in just the ball of the foot down. So breathe. and release that foot, moving to the other side. So pressing the left foot back, pressing the ball of the foot and toes into the earth, engaging those muscles. Breathe into the stretch. And release that leg. Take a moment to relax, and then come back into it. Pressing the foot down into the earth. There's the option to flip the toenails under. Don't do this with shoes. You can do it without if you'd like. That's the deepest version of the stretch. And let that foot come back down. Great job. We're going to be moving to standing. So a couple of tips moving to standing. I'm going to do some walking exercises. The best way to do this is either to set up several chairs so that you feel like you have something sturdy that can help support you. Um, using a walker would work great for some of these exercises. Or having something long that you can hold on to. Maybe a counter if that feels comfortable that you can walk along. Just find a place with something that you can hold on to that will help support you as you do these exercises. So I'm going to slide my chair over to the side so that you can see what I'm doing. We're going to do a couple standing balances and then we'll do some walking exercises. Um, so for these exercises, you're going to need a block or something similar, just something that is dense that you can press into without it collapsing. So we're going to set that in between the thighs we're going to bring the feet so that they're straight. You can hold on to your chair and start to press the legs together. This is helping us to regain our mountain pose as we're standing. From here, I want you to stand up as straight as you can. Roll the shoulders back. Lengthen the spine. Tuck the chin. We're just finding that mountain pose again in a standing position. Take a moment to breathe and see how you feel. If you want, you can have both hands on your support. It might be a chair, it might be a counter, 
or walker. Just find something that's supporting you. Now I want you to take that block away and just see how you feel now. Just take a moment to stand still and see if you feel any different. Memorize this alignment that you have. From here, we're going to do a couple exercises that will help you to work on your balance. So we'll start by doing what we did in the chair. We're going to lift the heels, bringing the hips forward slightly. We're going to start to lift both heels off the ground. It's okay if it's just an inch or two. Just kind of feel how that feels and then come back down. And then if you can, lift the toes up off the ground. You're bringing the weight backwards slightly. And come forward. Lifting the heels. You might go a little bit higher this time if it's comfortable. And roll back. Lifting the toes, maybe the balls of the feet. Heels continuing to breathe. And toes. Heels. And toes. Okay, come back down. We're going to stretch the right foot back, press it into the ground, and then bend the left knee so that we get a nice calf stretch and a nice stretch through the thigh. The deeper you bend the front knee, the deeper your stretch is going to be. Now come back in. We're going to do that on the left side now. Step the foot back, bend the front knee, get a good stretch through the leg muscles. Come back up and step that foot back in. We're going to do some balance. So to start out, I want you to bring your weight into your left foot. So we do that by leaning over into the left side. And then we're just going to lift the right foot off the ground and hover it. See how that feels? Is that comfortable? Do you feel off balance? If you feel comfortable here, you might start to lift the right knee slightly. Remember, you can have the toes on the ground if you need to. They might just be hovering. You can come up a little further. If you need to adjust where you're standing, you might step back. Make sure that you feel balanced and you can lift your leg as high as you feel comfortable lifting it. Remember, we're going to be here for several breaths, so find the position that feels good for you. It's okay if you start higher and go lower throughout the, the um, stretch and balance. Just breathe. Challenge yourself, but not to the point where you feel like you're going to fall. If you feel good in one place and then it starts not feeling good, you can always come out of it. And then slowly lower that leg back down. Shake out both legs by bending the knees. And we're going to the left side now. So we'll start by bringing our weight into the right by leaning over towards the right so that we're directly above our right foot. Now left, we're just going to start to lift the knee Toes can stay on the ground, or you might start to lift the toes off the ground. See where the balance is at. From here, you can lift them higher if it's comfortable, or they can just hover slightly above the ground. You can lift them as high as you feel good about. Breathe. Hold the pose while continuing the breath. This is a great strength exercise and also great for balance. It's helping those big muscles get better at holding you, and it's also helping those little muscles to stabilize. Okay, let that leg come back down. Shake it out by bending both the knees, alternating, bending the knees. Okay, great job. I am going to set my chair aside, but like I said, this is the point where you want to either have a counter to hold on to, multiple chairs that you can walk down, or a walker, something that can support you as you move. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our support item, 
And we're going to make sure that our feet are pointing forward. And we're going to take a step and try to put our heel right in front of our other toe. So my right foot is coming forward and I'm putting my right heel in front of my left toe. So you can move along whatever you have for support, looking forward. If you can, do it with one hand. When you get to the end of whatever your support item is, or when you've walked eight to 10 feet, turn around. If you can, do it with one hand. If not, do it with two. Just see if you can walk in a straight line, heel to toe. And then turn around. We'll do this there and back one more time. Okay, going back. And now we're going to take whatever item we have, hold it with both hands, and we're going to take large steps to the side. So step together. Try to make as big a movement as you can with your feet. It's the biggest step you can take. And then we'll just go back the other way. Step together, step together, step together. Great, a couple more of those or as many as you'd like, you're always welcome to pause the video and do extra reps if it feels like it's what you need today. Um, this one would be harder with a walker, so just try to find something that can help support you. Maybe you have a friend or a family member who can help you do this one. Okay, great job. Now I have one more exercise. If you can, um, go to a room with carpet or lay down a blanket on the floor. Uh, this is gonna be really good for balance and being used to walking on a surface that's uneven. Um, so again, using your support item, I'm gonna have you take as big a step as you can forward onto this padded surface. You can use both hands if you need to and then a big step with the other foot just try to take large steps in one direction and then you can turn around and using your support item, take large steps in the opposite direction. Lifting your foot as high as you can and then setting it back down again. Let's do this one more time. Taking big steps and back the other way. As big a step as you can take. Great job. Let the hands come down. We can move back to our seat. Now we're going to grab our weights, if you have them. Take a couple breaths. Let your legs relax for a moment. And then we're going to start out by letting the weights drop down to either side, and we're just going to do some reps forward and to the side. So we'll start by bringing the hands forward, palms facing in, go as high as your body allows, not over the head, but you can come near to the head, and then dropping back down. And bring your arms slightly past your hips. And then back down, going out to the side, lifting up in either direction, as high as your body allows, and then back down. Going forward, out in front of you. You might lift above the shoulders if the shoulders allow. And back down. Remember, we're going slightly past the hips here. Also, continue to breathe, dropping down by the sides, out to the side, up. And down, inhale and exhale. Breathe in and out. And in and 
and out. Just let that breath flow be really steady, coming past the hips and back down. One more time. I guess one more time to the side and then one more full round. Connecting the breath to movement. Going past the hips. Coming back in and out to the side. This is our last rep to the side. And back down. Bring the weights and rest them on your legs. Open the fingers. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Okay, for this next exercise, grab your weights. We're going to step the feet to either side of the chair so that we have some area to come down. We're going to bring the right hand down towards the ground and back up. Left hand down and back up. Right across the body. And then left across the body. If the shoulders allow, we're going to come up and then up. So we're going across the chest every time. Ready? Let's do that together. Down, down, side, side, up, up. We're going to do five of these. So this is two. Three. Four, and five. Great job. Take a moment. Breathe in and breathe out. Two more times, in and out. One more time. Step the feet back in. You might lean back on your chair. We're taking a moment to reset. Sit back up nice and tall again. Turn the palms so that they face up. And we're going to do one arm at a time. We're going to bicep curl in towards the shoulder and then back down. And it's okay if you're out from your legs a little. In and down. We'll do five of these on each side and then five together. Two more. Okay, other side. We're coming in and down. Remember where we are. I think we have a couple more. Okay, both hands coming in and back down. Two, three, four, and five. Great job. Bring the hands so the palms face down, release those weights. We're just going to do one more exercise with the weights. We're going to roll one hand forward and run one hand back just along the legs. So we're allowing the hands to hold the weights in place, but we're not gripping them. This is more of a brain exercise than a body exercise. OK, great job. You can set those weights aside. If you'd like, you can grab a blanket. We're going to move into our Shavasana, which is a really important part of yoga to allow the body to relax and rest completely at the end of our practice. There's a couple options that you can do with this blanket. So one is to just cover yourself with it so that you're nice and warm and feel good for your Shavasana. Um, you can put it behind you 
to kind of support you. You're welcome to have multiple blankets. You can have um, pillows or bolsters on your lap that you can rest your arms on or rest your face into. Lots of options. So find a position that's comfortable for you. You can allow the body to start to relax. Press the back against the back of your chair. You can let the legs step out slightly if that's comfortable or they can stay in to support you. Hands can stay in the lap or fall down by your sides. You might fold your arms. You're welcome to tuck the chin slightly. If it's comfortable, close your eyes. Another option for this, if you'd like, is to lay down either on a bed or a couch where you feel comfortable and where you can get up so that you can allow your body to stretch out at the end of the day in practice. Just make sure wherever you lay down that you're not going to fall asleep. Now once you've found your Shavasana, take a moment to start at the crown of your head and we're going to do a body scan to relax and release any tension that might still be in the body. So the crown of the head and the forehead, focus on any tension you might be holding there on the inhale and relax and release that area on the exhale. The neck and the shoulders, inhale and focus. Exhale, relax and release. The arms and the hands. Inhale, focus. Exhale, relax. The chests, the rib cage, the abs. Inhale and focus and exhale, relax. Moving down to the hips on the inhale, focus the pelvis. Exhale, relax and release. Move into the thighs and the upper legs. Inhale, focus and exhale, relax and release. Moving to the lower legs, the ankles and the feet. On the inhale, focus on any tension you might be holding in the lower body. And on the exhale, relax and release. Take a moment now to just be here, to be aware of any sensations that you feel, any emotions that you might have. Don't latch on to any one thing, but allow them to flow freely through your mind. Allow yourself to be okay with where you're at. Thank your body for showing up for this practice. Thank yourself for putting in the effort to be healthier and happier. Thank your heart for beating. Thank your lungs for drawing in oxygen. Thank your senses for the work that they still do for you. Thank your muscles for showing up for moving through this practice. Thank your environment for giving you a place where you could perform this practice. And now allow yourself to just breathe and just rest.
I would encourage you to pause the video here and continue your Shavasana for five to 10 minutes if you have that time. It's a very beneficial part of the practice to just be able to find stillness and rest in a busy day. If you don't have time, you can start to come out of Shavasana now, doing any final stretches or movements that you feel you need today before you go back to life and whatever you have scheduled. When you're ready, start to come back into your mountain pose, bringing the hands to heart center. If you wish to, join me. Namaste. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with those who might need it. I've included in the information part below some resources for those with Parkinson's from the American Parkinson's Disease Association. Thanks, we'll see you next time.